from a biological standpoint, I think it is fascinating that that, that, that burden is such a watershed yeah. uh, that at four mets and actually probably three, the patient falls off a cliff. Um, now, the question, biological question is, is that the point where the primary tumour stops feeding the metastases and the metastases start feeding each other? Uh, or is there some immunological threshold that is overwhelmed uh, and suddenly things start to go? Or is there some other effect that we don't fully understand? I wonder, is it a dose effect, you know, because the, the doses in Stampede weren't really radical radiation doses, yeah. whereas yeah. there's some <laughs> retrospective data suggesting that there's a threshold of the sort of radical uh, therapy doses, there's a 70 gray type of biological equivalent that might be more effective. Yes, well, I, in, well, if you look at the RTO1 trial, which is the MRC's trial that compared 64 gray with 74 gray, that had a very big and very early readout in terms of PSA relapse-free survival was much better with the higher dose that even with 15 years of follow-up has never translated even into a metastatic progression-free survival difference, let alone an OS difference. So one interpretation of that dose data is actually you don't need to give more than 64 gray and 32 or yeah. equivalent. So yeah. I mean, nobody, I think, thinks that. But because I guess you trade extra radiation dose for less hormone therapy yeah, later exactly. is probably what you're doing. Yeah. But uh, the, in the paper that we've written, um, we've concluded that it wouldn't, because we picked two doses for the radiotherapy part of this, 55 in 20, which is actually broadly equivalent to 64 in 32 yes. on alpha-beta yeah. ratios. Um, and we picked that because when we set up, not everybody had IMRT, IGRT, and we didn't want to subject people to 37 fractions of conformal radiotherapy, yeah. Yeah. which yeah. actually yeah. PEACE1 yeah. has yeah. done. So that, yeah. that it will, so that data will be interesting in due course. Um, so we, we knew the toxicity was very manageable, but in the meantime, everybody's got IMRT. We've chip, the CHIP trial has shown that 30, 74 and 37 is, is the equivalent, yeah, 60 and 20 yeah. is, is, as, good is as, as, yeah. as good as. So I think putting those two sets of results together, I think it would be reasonable to give 60 and 20, not 55 and 20 yes. as the local therapy, which will be our default for moving forwards for our next yeah. stage of Stampede. The question of volume is, uh, and, and risk is another thing which is, this is unearthed and we hadn't really given a huge amount of thought to this before we started doing the analyses for Abbey, Rasharone and uh, M1RT in Stampede. If you think about it carefully, Charted has a, um, a volume stratification, but actually it's not looking at volume, it's looking at number. numbers. Yeah. Um, and so it quantifies according to uh, four and an axial and non-axial, and any visceral goes automatically into the high risk. It doesn't take any account at all of lymph nodes, none. And if you then look at latitude, which looks at risk and arbitrarily produces Gleason 8 or above three or more bone, above three bone metastases, and any visceral, again, no lymph node classification at all. And um, when you look at the outcome from patients who are presenting with bone only, bone lymph node, and visceral, the bone and lymph node combination is as lethal as visceral at first presentation. And we just published on this on the latest SEER data, over 17,000 patients, and you can see very clearly that any patient, and it doesn't really matter how many lymph nodes they've got, they just need bone and lymph node in any number, they automatically fall into a worse prognosis category. So uh, really we haven't addressed this concept of tumour burden. Um, and that, that's another thing that we're hoping to look at within Stampede where we've got this very large uh, body now of, of imaging data which is very well classified, which is very well quantified and where we hope to be able to answer some of these questions. I think, I think the other thing in relation to that as well is, is that we've pulled in thousands of scans into Manchester. We're busy pulling in thousands of tissue blocks into UCL, so Gert Attard has been leading that. So we'll be able to do kind of radiogenomic type research on, a, on an industrial scale with all this stuff. We're going to have an absolute data bonanza to, to play with here. Um, and uh, I know I entirely agree with everything you've said, really.